it's raining outside. Just had a scoop of peanut butter. So let's journal. We're gonna do some basic visual journaling techniques. The supplies I have are water, any kind of paintbrush. Um, I tend to like this with the flat head. I feel like I have more control. Uh, watercolor, any kind of watercolor that you want to use. I like praying. Um, well, I use it in the classroom, so that's what I'm used to. Um, a textured sponge and regular bubble wrap. And do not pop your bubble wrap. Oh, I used to catch students popping it all the time. and I go, Arr! Okay, so I always, always think in threes. So this is my journal and I call this a spread. So this side and this side to me is just one artwork. Um, I tend to pick um, a color palette that is, well, I change all the time. So I'm gonna pick a cool color palette. So if you had a color wheel, it is the purples, the greens, and the blues. So I'm gonna pick this lovely purple right here. And I hold my brush loosely. I put a lot of water in and I just kind of scrub it. And you can add more water. I don't think much, I just do. Okay, a little bit more. I'm thinking in threes. So we're going down here and it kind of balances out my journal spread. Um, there's nothing more daunting than starting on a white journal sketchbook. Okay, so there's three. You can always add to it. I'm going to pick one of my favorite colors is this blue. Actually, the purple kind of looks like on the warm side, so I'm going with it. Okay, I'm just scribbling, not thinking. Sometimes I think, but it hurts. A little splatter there. Embrace your mistakes. All right, I'm gonna choose another color. Let's do... I'm gonna do, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, I like this green. Oh, it's too close to the blue. Let's do, oh, let's do light green. All right, mix it in here. Remember, I'm thinking in threes. You don't always have to think in threes, but it tends to balance out your spread. Okay, let's get that in there. All right, now, watercolor um, dries pretty quickly. Um, you can usually blow it with a, a hair dryer or a heat gun, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go right to a texture, any textured sponge, but this is a texture sponge. Um, and I'm going to add um, regular blue. So this blue right here. Now, sometimes you can't really tell that it's on there, but it's always important to have a scrap piece of paper by you because when you think you don't have enough um, color on there, you usually have too much. All right, so take your scrap and put it on there and see there's too much. See how it's watery it is? So I got most of it off. So I'm gonna place this on here and sometimes I do more than threes. I really like the sponge effect. Um, now this is the background. You do not have to think it's a finished piece of work. This is just the first layer. And um, sometimes I put about 15 layers on my journal. So it's okay to leave white on here. Um, okay, and you can always add more. Next, I'm gonna do bubble wrap. Same thing, have a scrap piece of paper. I'm using the same brush, just cleaning it out. Uh, I love, let's see. Hmm, you know what? I'm gonna use blue again, the, the darker blue. Now, this always is deceiving because you think there's not enough on there. And you wanna add more and more. That's always do it on a scrap piece of paper because yeah you'll take some of the water off all right so i'm gonna place this on of course i'm always thinking in threes 
bubble wrap. Yes, I tend to do more than threes. Um, I'm gonna add some more. I'm gonna do four. Do it on the scrap first. See? And do it here. Now this is just background, okay? And the beauty about watercolor is that when it dries, it blends, and it brightens. And I'm going a little crazy. I know, I know, it happens. Okay, all right. All right, so that is watercolor wash. I'm thinking in threes, I use three colors, textured sponge, and a bubble wrap. Okay, we will add to this as soon as it dries, and I will be right back. Okay, now my spread is dried. Um, Remember, I put watercolor wash, bubble wrap, and sponge. Now I'm gonna add stamps. Now I have all kinds of stamps. They're old. Um, some have the uh, the wood on them. Some have the rubber. Some have foam. And some are just um, plastic. And you need something hard to put some of these on. Now, you also have to remember that your uh, journal will be kind of bent. So if you want something to be very flat from your sponge, you need to put something harder under that. And I'll show you. Um, I'm using archival ink. Um, any um, permanent ink you can use. Um, so I'm using black, um, library green. Um, I'm using, let's see, cobalt blue and pink. Vibrant of fuchsia. Okay, so um, I'm gonna try to use all of these. So I love this um, foam one. So remember to put some scrap paper under, newspaper, whatever. I can get wild with the stamps. Okay, so I you can either press on here or you can do it the other way around. Um, if you, this stamp pad looks somewhat old, so hopefully it works. Um, you can always do it on scrap paper first to see if it works. But um, I think in threes or more, sometimes I like to use this as a border and just push down and it can get a little crazy. So I'm not using the whole stamp, just using partial. Once again, I'm not really thinking much. <laughs> so if you put it on both sides of your spread, it'll balance it. So I kind of, um, it's kind of lighter there. So just add more, you know, just add a little more. You know, uh, sometimes I tend to overdo my spreads one step too far, but uh, hey, it happens. I'm liking it. I'm gonna move this over. Other side. The other side. Okay, so we're just starting to add layer on layer. Any stamps will do. Um, sometimes stamps can get expensive. I had a wonderful lady donate a whole bunch to my class. I'm very grateful. Most, I worked in a public school system, so we did have a pretty good art budget, which was nice. Oh, it's awful when they take art out of schools. So I got to teach this and my classes were pretty packed. I loved it, most of the time. Okay, and I can always come back. thing maybe okay so I love these cute little flowers I'm gonna do pink you know I got a little pink going color sometimes I, I kind of think of things in this one I guess 
and I sometimes um, color those in with color pencil. I'm balancing, I know. Organized chaos. Sometimes I like to go off. enough. Um, I have this little one, Fun Times. I'm going to use black. Again, sometimes I just get real messy and you just use my hands. Do I want green or do I want black? I kind of want black. Okay, so this one's kind of dark. Mm, do I want that? Yeah. I always make it work somehow. Okay. I'm going to show you a transfer and some of my transfer um, letters are black. Here. Going crazy with the stains. Okay. the stamps I'm using the rubber one. I don't know if it's gonna stick on this one. Kind of like now always kind of clean your stamp before you change the ink colors because you don't want to mix them. Oh, I did it. I put it black on there. No? Oops. It happens. Brace your mistakes. done with this one. So I used one, two, three, four, five different stamps. Okay, that is stamps. Um, so next I'm going to uh, show you how to add a transfer and texture plate. Great. We're going to add watercolor pencil. I like to make these kind of tunnel things. I use um, three colors of watercolor pencil. So this is the watercolor pencil I'm going to use. Uh, you want to stay with the same color scheme. So if you were to mix cool colors, they'll blend great. If you are to have warm colors, they'll mix great, but you cannot mix warm and cool colors because you get brown. Now there's nothing wrong with the color brown, but um, I don't want it on my spread. So what I'm going to do is I love this circle stencil and I want bigger circles. So I found my yes paste. I'm going to put a circle here and then my Yeti coffee cup. I'm going to put a circle here and then I'm going to put a circle going off maybe right there. Okay, so I'm gonna take my darkest color. I picked three. I picked kind of staying in the same color palette as my journal spread. I picked a dark blue, then uh, this is green blue, and this is yellow green. 
So all I have to do is I'm going to just trace this half circle. I'm going off and then I'm going to trace this. I'm going over all the stamp work and the watercolor wash. That's a little crooked. That's all right. I'll fix it. And do I want that right there? Right here? I'm kind of thinking about this. Ah, uh, yeah. What the heck? And right here. So, how I get this tunnel effect is everything that's inside the circle. Oh, that is a terrible circle. I will fix that. No problem. Sorry, my head's in the video. Okay. I got my hair color today, so you can't see the gray. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take and um, really color with the watercolor pencil. Now, you can use a watercolor pencil just like a regular color pencil and color. Or I'm gonna use this like a paintbrush. Or you can always dip your watercolor pencil in here, and it's cool, it'll, it'll act like you're painting, but I'm gonna use it like a color and then I'm gonna wash it out. Okay, so for the sake of time, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to color this all the way around, this one, this one, and this one. And then I'm gonna take this blue green, do the same thing, all the way around. And then I'm going to take this green. All right, so I will finish that and I will be back. All right, so I have um, made a circle and then I took three watercolor pencils and I didn't do it very neat at all. So I made it kind of thick with the darkest color first and then I did the medium color blue. And then I took the yellow green, just like that. So it's not that nice and neat. I had to sharpen my pencils constantly. And what I do is I take a flathead uh, paintbrush and I did it over here already. So it is drying. And all I did was I took my brush at the darkest color blue and I kind of wiggled it to activate the watercolor pencil and then I pulled it out. Wiggle and then pull it out. Wiggle and pull it out. And then sometimes I go back. And you don't want to mix the colors too much. Remember I stayed with the um, blue colors, or the cool colors, I'm sorry. Um, it, and then you can do this with warm colors and you can also use black as the um, inner ring color and it looks really cool. But if you mix cool and warm colors, you're going to get a brown. And just keep pulling. You do not want any water on the inside. And it kind of gives this tunnel effect. And just keep pulling. It's hard not to move my journal while I'm taping. Now this one, I should have, I didn't have a whole lot. In this one I do, a um, lot of um, under layers. But you know, we just keep adding. If you accidentally get um, water in here, just take a paper towel or your finger and get it out. Watercolor dries pretty quickly. You can always use a blow dryer.
don't want to use too small of a brush or too big. And this is just, this isn't like a high quality brush at all. Okay. I just think I might need one right there, but you know, I'm just gonna leave it. And there are your watercolor tunnels. They add some dimension. 